Hey, how you doing? This is John, and welcome to John's Long Box. Today I'm looking at the board game Divine Right. So this is a board game that came out in 1979 by TSR. And yes, it is a hex board with chits. This just came out. This is the newest edition. This is the third edition. I got this game back when it was just a paper mat that, that had folds in it so it never laid flat so all the chits would fall down and everybody would get argumentative and problems oh man but I, I love this game so just look at this huge board this is a huge huge board each one of these hexes is about an inch so you can see just how huge this is so i've never played a full 20 rounds because i just read the rules for the first time in 30 years and i realized i've been doing a major rule wrong all my life but this is my favorite game it's a it's I think objectively it's a bad game as far as the rules are concerned, but I just love it. I, I spent so much time as a kid just playing this game. So it's a continent. It's fantasy. And uh, all these all these colors are nation states. And all this brown is wasteland, unclaimed land. And what it is, it's, it's derivative of Lord of the Rings. So over here we got the white wizards. Over there we got the, the necromancer black wizards. We got elves. We got dwarves that are separated just like in Lord of the Rings. These are humans, like, like I, I guess these are like Spain. Now, this is like Prussia. These are the goblins. This is like France. This is like Japan. This is like uh, like Germany. This is this is like Spain. This is Greece. And this is like the pirate nation. I, I don't know. Loose, loosely, you know, whatever. And you, and you fight. But it's not a fighting game. You got to get points. So I guess the only thing to, to do is just describe the phases of, of the game. So first thing you do is you roll two dice and you consult this chart for random events. Okay? You get a random event. And then what you do is diplomacy. Diplomacy is how you win the game, mostly. So you, you take your ambassador. Your ambassador is like a wizard that could travel anywhere. So he could... Everybody says teleport, but I always just think, you know, whatever. He's just an expert, you know... Troops move slowly because they're troops and logistics, stuff like that. But you got one guy on horseback and he just goes all over wherever he wants. And what you do is you either recruit another nation, you recruit a special mercenary, you recruit regular mercenaries, you recruit barbarians, you assassinate other kings, or you assassinate other ambassadors. And that's it. That's 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 the that's the game. That's the diplomacy phase. Then if you recruit a nation, they're on your side and you build up nations. So this was the White Wizards. And we had Muatar, the Yellow Nation. We had uh, Hothar, this nation, and Pan, this nation. So we had this, 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 right in the middle, versus the Black Hand. And then the Black Hand got uh, just like special mercenaries. He got the the Black Knight. He got the uh, this wizard over here, and he got the Ghost Riders of Kos. He didn't really seem to recruit any actual humans which kind of worked out he had like all the evil mercenaries and what i i was the good guys i i marched down here because we were going to assault you know basically baradura that the, the, the dark tower he intercepted us laid a siege over here and then me i went directly against so is great the white wizard directly against the black wizard and i got killed what seven rounds i got killed end of the game it was a lot of fun though but I, I, I could tell you, I, I just remember like epic stories about this game as a kid. I remember like literally like all day, a rainy day, me and my friends would play. One of the greatest adventures ever was the, the Elf King. When all the way here, over here is the Temple of the Kings. Only kings could go in there. If you roll a one, you die. If you roll a six, you fall into an enchanted sleep and only another king could come and wake you up. And that king could assassinate you or capture you or, or wake you up if it's a friend. So the Elf King traveled all the way there got a flying carpet, went back, commanded his armies, and then I just remember he laid siege to, a, and then while he was there, the king flew in the carpet and landed on it, commanded another army, and, and attacked it, ended the siege, winning the game. Oh, it was so much fun. So how do you get points? You get points for sieging and, and plundering castles. So like this castle over here is, is five. It's not a royal castle, so five times three is 15. Royal castles are 10 times. Killing or an enemy is 40 points, killing a player character is 70 points. So and when a player character dies, the game ends. So so I was killed, the black hand got 70 points, end of the game. 
just like that. A lot of people's rookie mistakes is you get engaged in pointless battles. It's not a battle game. It's, it's you know, you, you, you want to siege castles. You want to capture and assassinate kings. Fighting for the sake of fighting is just going to, it's just, it's, you're going to lose. So you, you fight sparingly. So I only fought to break the siege and I paid the consequences. I, I got killed. But I, I love this game. All right. See you. Bye-bye.